Welcome back to The Ref Show. We've uh, got that big heading of diving written down here. Now, the FA have started. Now, once you start something, you've got to finish something, haven't you? And so diving is out of the game. How far down the road, Keith, do you feel the FA and football are with this campaign? I think the realism is they're never going to get diving out of the game. It's always going to be there. It's part of the process. Uh, But I, I, I do think that the FA are inconsistent in terms of its application. And and I I qualify that by saying, look, I can dive and I'm spotted by the referee and I get a yellow card. I can dive and I'm not spotted by the referee in the middle of the field, right? And I get nothing. It doesn't even go to the review panel, right? I can dive and I've been seen by the review panel, mm. right, and I've been suspended. Mm. Uh, all inconsistent. You can also have the review panel, of course, say, well, we've had several looks and we're not 100% sure, so you've got away with it. Well, similar incidents have either brought a charge or, or not brought a charge. So where are we with this? Are you with Keith's suggestion, Carlton, that diving anywhere on the field, you know, in the sense of soccer anywhere, it should be punishable retrospectively. Yes, it's cheating. Right. I, I mean, I've had this conversation with, 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 with foreign players who have played with them, whatever. When you go and play on the continent, right. it's expected to do it in training. Mm. If right. there's any kind of contact or anybody goes near them, they yeah. go down. Now, it's a physical game we play in. But what I'm seeing now, which, like I said, I mentioned Shane Long yesterday, I'm seeing British players do it now, mm. right? Mm. Whereby, you know, they've, there's a little bit of contact and their reaction is, you know, well, it's, it's tantamount to cheating. It's trying to get another player sent off. Mm. I hate to see players running and going to the referee, yellow card, red card, or whatever. Let the referee do his job, mm. right? A play, and what's happening now, what's worse for me now, is I'm watching attacking players get into areas near the box and it's very hard for a defender there's nothing you could do Mm. if they play the ball they cross you right Mm. my first instinct as a defender and I was taught and I was a good defender Mm. was to get my body across the ball Mm -hmm. so what do I what do I do now if he plays the ball across me and then puts his leg not trying to get the ball he can't get the ball Mm. but puts his leg in front of me now that's cheating, yeah. Cause that, and that's in the box or yes. outside the box yes. in a dangerous area in the Premier League or the Champions League. Now that's a goal. Yes, this is the problem we've got, isn't it? I mean, contriving contact and all sorts of stuff. Well, like I, that as well, I think I, I think there's a. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that Carlton's here because I think there's a fundamental issue in our game here. You know, we 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 concentrate on attackers and we love attackers and the wings and the runs and all that. But there is a fundamental art that's disappearing out of our game in terms mm-hmm. of defenders. Mm-hmm. And, and what, what we're getting now is we're getting defenders who are, who are trying to do the job and failing to do the job because they either get a yellow card because we see forwards running in to, as though they've been blocked off yeah. and the, the, the defender gets a yellow card or we're seeing exactly what Carlton has said, the mm-hmm. manufactured act of simulation mm. that puts a defender right mm. on a second yellow and a red. Well this all makes it harder and harder for the referee to detect what, what is a foul and what isn't a foul because and of, what is a dive and what isn't a dive. Eh? Because the problem is Alan, <coughs> sometimes as a defender you're going to end up out of position. Mm. You're going to have to make a recovery run or recovery tackle. But you can't do it now if, I mean if I was managing now and, and my a situation like that happened, I would be saying to my uh, defenders, if it's early on in the game, let them go. Mm. Let them go. Because Mm. you're going to be down to 10 men. Mm. You're better off letting the goal and letting it stand. But it's, again, it comes back to, I remember Big Ron coming in our dressing room and going, I won't mention the name of the player, and going ballistic. Stay on your feet. Now I'm going to give you the world's best player Mm. without a shadow of doubt and has been for years. You ever see him simulate? 
You ever see no, him go down, Messi? No, no. They're dragging him down, they're dragging him down. Yeah. He don't go down, because no. he knows once he's caught, he wants the referee to know for true yeah. he's being caught. Right? Yeah. And that's why he gets a lot of decisions going his way, yeah. because the referee knows he's going to try and stay on his feet. Yeah. Great point, well made. But yeah, with, you know, it's a cultural thing with with diving, and I just guess the game as a whole has just got to keep at it um, in order to uh, eradicate it the eventually. Big, the, the, the big thing, I mean, even in my time, I pulled all the managers of the clubs together and said, "Look, we're going to get it wrong," and I guarantee you, referees are going to get it wrong because they're so good at it. Mm. I mean, I look three or four times at a, de- at a replay, and suddenly go, "Yeah." He's gone for it, and it's, he, the referee's bought it, as I have done in the first two or three yeah. looks. Yeah. So I, I think the difficulty here is that, as a whole, football needs to say to itself, look, let's set the example mm. and stop this, and, and the managers try and stop it on, All right. on the training ground, We've if got... that's feasibly possible. No, it's feasible. The manager can stamp yeah. it out. Ron stamped it out at our place. Yeah. He, yeah. Wouldn't, he wouldn't have it. And, uh, you know, somebody asked me a question the other day, well, if you won the World Cup like Argentina did with yeah. Maradona, yeah. as a player, would you come out and say, I would come out and say it's cheating. Four hundred percent. I wouldn't of course I'm not gonna give away my World Cup winners medal or whatever, but I would turn around and say, I'm not condoning that, right? Mm. Because you've got a defender now or a goalkeeper in that situation, mm. who, it, it their sort of careers or whatever are tarnished by somebody Who's, who's doing who's, that? Who's cheating? Okay, we've got uh, grappling and descent to come. Just to, to break in briefly on the sort of playing side of the game, um, this remarkable circumstance in the championship where a game between Sheffield Wednesday and Middlesbrough, which Middlesbrough won 2 1 at Hillsborough just before Christmas, um, led to um, both managers lo- losing their jobs. Carlos Carvalho of Sheffield Wednesday have been having a very bad run. Gary Monk, sort of more puzzlingly, uh, of, of Middlesbrough, but the chairman at Middlesbrough making it quite clear that he wanted promotion and T- Tony Pulis has got the job. Yeah, I think what, what happened with that, I think, we, you know, Gary Monk was going to get the sack regardless of the result that day. Yeah. Pulis Seems was so. lined, well, Pulis was lined yeah. up. You don't, you don't give, you don't get a man of Pulis's stature uh, within 24 hours. That no. deal was wrapped up. Yeah. So regardless of the result, Pulis was going. We knew that there was always a chance that uh, Carlos was was he was yes. running on thin ice, yeah. so it wasn't unexpected that Carlos went after yes. the game. No. He needed to win that day, and he probably needed to go on a, an unbelievable run to keep his job. Oh, um, right. As so often happens, the next match it's a three 0 win at Nottingham Forest, but credit to Lee Bull and, and the players for that sort yeah. of reaction that they produced. But uh, Derek uh, Dooley. Uh, I know a great hero of yours, yeah, Keith absolutely. Hackett. You and I both remember that Derek Dooley was sacked on Christmas Eve yeah. 1973 by the same club. Mm. Circumstances, though, entirely different, as I recall. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I don't think uh, Sheffield Wednesday were forgiven for lots of reasons when, mm. uh, when they sacked Derek. And I think, I mean, Derek, Derek then obviously went across the, the, the way mm. and, uh, and did a good job at, uh, at Bramalay. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to see anybody fired, but we're in we're in a you know we're in a game where there is an expectation. Uh, I mean, the chairman of Middlesbrough is a, he, he is one of the better chairmen. Yeah, that's not having a go at Chancery. I, I've no. not met him, but I think effectively what we've got here is we're in a game that demands results, mm-hmm. and this is the same. I took criticism when I fired referees or I didn't use them because they mm-hmm. weren't they weren't on form. And people said, you're too tough, you're too tough. But that's how it should be. No, but Keith, there there is, and I've always said this, there is two types of manager. Mm. There's the manager that has means and a manager that doesn't have means. And when a manager has means, he's got to deliver. Jose Mourinho has to get Man United in the Champions League. That's bottom line. If he Mm. doesn't, he's going to be out of work. Now he's had the tools to do his trade. As Carlos Cavalier, yes. Has he been given time? Yes. Got to go. Gary Monk, when he signed his contract, knew that the chairman had told him, we need to get promotion this season, mm. right? <laughs> okay, well, we've got less. We've got a minute and a half or le- less left. <laughs> uh, just, just in 20 seconds, dissent, is there less of it? Is there less of it this season I since think the I've countdown? Seen, I, well, I think generally there's less. I'm just worried about when the referee uh, is surrounded by players, that's still happening, yeah. and therefore I'd like to see that aspect. Let the referee do his job and stop surrounding him 
trying to manipulate it or, right. or get into his brain less. in terms of decisions. I think he's been. I think he's been less. Yeah. I think yeah. players are learning now that, that you know. Keep on. Yeah, because he's not going to change his decision, and you know, it's not. It, you know, you're going to get yourself sent off or, or suspended. And finally, that word grappling, which you are the ref have grappled with a lot. Is our campaign, is it starting to work, Keith? Well, let's Mike Dean take the credit. Yeah. Because he's the guy that delivered. Everybody looked at him in amazement when he pulled and awarded that penalty kick for an, an almost innocuous pull on, a, on a, an attacker. But he did, and that set the trend. And, yeah, gratefully, I think we're seeing less of it. Mm. Good for the game. Yeah, good for the game, really is. Because, again, right. it's cheap. Yeah, indeed. And it's... And it, you know, if we cut out grappling, we get back to some proper defending, hopefully. Proper defending, well. yeah. you know, holding the defender. Get yourself in a position yeah. and go and attack the ball. Right, brilliant. Carlton, thanks very much indeed. And, and to you, Keith. Thank you to you for watching. We'll be back with another Ref Show next week. By when it'll be 2018. So it remains for all of us yeah. to wish you a very happy new year. See you. Bye. <laughs>